Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to pull stock prices into Excel using Power Query. So I'm going to pull the data from Yahoo Finance and the first thing I'm going to do is on the data tab under get and transform data, I'm going to select the from web button and what this is going to do is ask me to enter in a URL. So what I'm going to do is go into Yahoo Finance. So this is the page for, for Apple. I'm on the historical data page and you know, let's say I want to pull in the last three months, six months, it really doesn't matter. Hit apply. The key thing is you want this this date, these periods to show up in here for the for the date ranges. And I'm gonna go over to the download button here, right click, copy link location, and then I'm gonna switch back over into Excel, control V to paste it in here, hit OK. Now I could do some additional changes to this query to, to transform the data so it looks a little different, but for, for the sake of just importing, I'm gonna hit the load button. And what's gonna happen now is it loads the data into Excel. So if I needed to refresh this data, I could just right click refresh or on the data page, hit refresh all, and it's gonna re refresh this. Now, because I'm looking at a fixed range of dates, it's probably not gonna make a whole lot of sense because this is gonna stay the same. Um, one of the downsides of, you know, if you, you, you stayed with this is, you know, to, to update the data, you'd have to get a new URL for a different date range, um, or if you wanted to move to a different ticker. But the good thing is we can add named ranges into into Power Query, so we can dynamically change the, the date range that we're looking at as well as the ticker. So that's what I'll show you how to do next. So I'm gonna create one variable for the ticker, and that's just going to be in this, I'm just gonna use, continue to use Apple. And to set up a named range, if you've never done it before, it's super easy, just click here, type in ticker, and set up a name range for that. Now I'm gonna have the start date, and the end date variables here. And for the start date, let's just say January 1st. The end date, let's say March 15th, doesn't matter. Now the one thing you'll notice from the, the periods that Yahoo Finance used, they don't have, they don't say January, they don't reference March. You know, they have the, this long string of numbers, just a timestamp. And so that's what I'm gonna need to convert these values into. And so to convert it into a timestamp, a timestamp, what I'm gonna to need to do is take the date, I'm gonna open brackets, take the date minus 1970 from it. So this is the this is the calculation to turn it to a Unix timestamp, and then multiply it by hour, by minutes, seconds, and hours in a day. And so what I'm gonna do is need to change this to to a number, but really to, to get the right value, but to use this as a variable, I'm, I'm gonna make an adjustment. I change it to numbers for now, but what I'm gonna do is actually change this back to general. And what I want this, I want this to read as string and not a number in Power Query. So I'm gonna add quotations for the equal sign. I'm using ampersand to link this together. So now it gives me that value, because that's what I want in, in Power Query. And this is the easiest way to convert it into a string. Just add the equal sign um, in front of it. Because on Yahoo Finance, it's gonna say period one equals you know, this timestamp. And so what I'm gonna do is create a variable for this, this string, including the equal sign. So rather than putting it, cr creating this as a number and then worrying about uh, converting it into, into text, I figure adding the equal sign ahead is an easy way to uh, make this read as text. And so now what I'm gonna do is set the variable here for start date and this one for end date. And I'm naming these the exact same way just to make sure uh, that it's consistent and easy to refer back to later. So now at the query, I can right click edit. And if I go here, up top there's an advanced editor and this is where I can adjust my just the the code on the on the back end of the query so uh, what I 
what you can do here is set up the variables. Now setting them up, um, you need to make sure, or setting up the name ranges, you want to make sure you're using um, a specific uh, a pattern so that it recognizes properly in Power Query, and I'll show you what that is. So let's say for the ticker, I'm going to set that equal to, i got to type in Excel, current workbook, open and close parentheses, open the brackets, and then set name equal to ticker. Use a capital T so everything's consistent as well. Close that up. And then I'm going to do another bracket for content. This is zero because there's this is because Power Query is normally dealing with tables, so this is why this convention might seem a little weird, but I'd suggest sticking with this sort of a, a template, especially when you're using, or this sort of a layout, when you're referencing a name range, so that way it properly um, references it, and then just copy and paste it over. So for start date, I'm just going to replicate this, and then name, I'm just going to send it to start date. I'm going to change this to end date, and this is also going to be end date. So the variables are set up. And now, so the main thing left to do now is I need to adjust this um, this URL, right? So now all this is going to stay the same up until here. So we see AAPL for Apple. So what I'm going to do is close, um, close the quotes there and then use my variable for the ticker, right? And then ampersand again, and then open it back up. I'm going to get rid of Apple again. So now I'm going to pick up from the question mark, and then I'm going to go all the way to period one, and now close the quotes again. And now remember my start date variable, which is start date is for period one. My start date variable includes the equal sign, so I'm going to get rid of everything, including that equal sign, start date. And then I'm going to use an ampersand again, and then open quotes, and the ampersand was in the URL, so I'm going to keep that, period two, and again, go to the just before the equal sign, close quotes again, use an ampersand, and send this to end date. Now I don't think it, the interval, unless you want more than one day at a time, you can get rid of this. Um, all this other stuff, like adjust the close, you could probably get rid of this, unless you've got a specific um, query that you need to run. But I'm gonna get rid of that, and now, if I hit done, right, so I'm gonna close and load this here. And now if you get this warning about privacy levels, to get rid of this, what you can do is set this to public, hit save. And then now, what I can do is make changes. So let's say, now actually the one thing I'll do here is I'm gonna edit this power qu this query because right now the dates are not showing at the top. So I go back in here, I can add a step to this query and let's sort it as descending. So that way I've got the latest date at the top. So you can make changes to the query uh, to adjust it so it's showing up um, how you like it. Obviously you can change the, the layout and things like that, but for the sake of not going too deep into that, I'm just gonna keep it simple here. So let's say I wanted to switch over and I want to look at Amazon stock price. Now Amazon stock price is in the thousands, so it'll be easy to tell that this updates properly. So to update, you can either go to data, refresh all, or you can just right click, refresh the query. So I'm gonna hit the refresh all button. And so now we can see a yeah, $3,075, it sounds about right for Amazon. Now if I change this date to, let's say March 20th, hit a refresh, now it's pulled more data. So you can see it's it's easy to swap back and forth now, AAPL, hit refresh, and now we're back to Apple stock price. So it's, uh, by, by setting up these variables, uh, the query is a lot more usable now because you, know, you don't have to fumble back and forth going to Yahoo Finance, getting the new download link, making those making those changes on the web page, you can just do it right here in Excel and that query is automatically going to refresh for you based on your based on your selections, right? If I go to Google, go to refresh all, now I got Google stock price, right? So 
and then you can create your own formulas here based on based on these dates you can do lookups if you want to do calculations so this is probably the the best way to, to pull stock price data into into Excel I, I've done it before with with Google Sheets because Google Sheets has their native Google Finance functions in there so it's easy to pull that in there but then the problem is then you're linking to a Google Sheets page and so you're indirectly connecting to it so obviously that's maybe not not ideal I guess there's also the stock history function in Excel but unless you've got the latest version you won't have access to that and I've always and I've sometimes found that to be a bit problematic so using using Power Query I think and, and connecting directly to Yahoo Finance is probably the the best way I can think of to to get especially st historical stock data into here and you know if you have other sources or similar sources where you can pull data you can use a similar approach to to what I showed you here to to get that information so that's an overview of how you can pull stock data uh, from Yahoo Finance and uh, hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching